Okay, we're back. We're here on the main stage in Class of the for Dave Vellante, normally over there on the Cube set, but here we got a special presentation. Talk about Tatogi and the new CEO of Tatogi is Daniel Royston, who's also the CEO of Telco DR, Digital Revolution, great to see you. <laughs> and of course, <laughs> Robin Langdon, we interviewed you on the Cube, CTO of Tatogi. Um, this is a main stage conversation because this is the big news. Yeah. You guys launched there with, with the $100 million investment. We covered that news a couple weeks ago and you, you as the CEO. What's the story? Tell us what is happening with Tatogi. Why such a big focus? What's the big push? Yeah, I'm really excited about Tatogi because I really think this team is working to build public cloud tools for telco the right way. It's everything I've been talking about. I talked about it yesterday in my keynote and, and this is really the execution of that vision. So super excited about that. Uh, a couple of days ago, Rob and I were talking about the charging system, but there's another product that Tatogi introduced to the world, and that's the WebScale BSS system. So I think uh, we're going to talk about that today. It's well, going to be great. Let's get into obviously the, the charging system, which was a great conversation here. What is this focus? What is BSS about with cloud? How does the public cloud innovation change the game with this? Well, a little bit like charging. I mean, there are maybe, you know, 100 plus BSS systems out there. Why does the world need yet another BSS? And I think one thing is we're coupling it with public cloud, which gives it that web scale element, right? We could have a platform, never do another upgrade again, um, which I think is really exciting. But I think the, the really key thing that we're working on is we're building on top of open an open API standard. And a lot of vendors talk about their APIs. Why is this different? Um, these are standards developed by TM Forum. Right, it's an independent body in our industry. They've been working on these these forum, um, these uh, TM, sorry, open APIs, and all the different vendors signed a manifesto to say, "I pledge, I pledge yeah. to support the open APIs." But you look at the leaderboard, and everyone is sub sub ten, sub five, right? And so it's like kind of like going through the actions and not following, you know, saying it but not following it up, and um, and we're doing it. Well, so, so yeah, Robin, you guys. You just popped up on the leaderboard. <laughs> you went from a standing start to, I think, more than 10. Yeah. Uh, that's, yeah. You, I don't think that's ever been done before, has it? No, so we're out there, we, we published 12 APIs, um, and we got a quote from you know, TM Forum saying, essentially, they've never seen anyone move so fast uh, and to publish. And it's our intent to publish you know, um, 50 plus, all their APIs by the end of the year. So how were you able to do that? I mean, was this like, were you holding them back? Just kind of <laughs> dumping them on one day? Or was just this, this is the nature of the new business, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. And then you think about BSS, it's just, you know, been known for years to be a spaghetti of, you know, applications, you know, disparate data, um, data being duplicated, things, you know, systems not talking to each other, lots of different interface types. And it was crying out to be just, you know, sold properly in the cloud. And the cloud, public cloud is perfect for this. You know, we can build a model um, and start rather than looking at the applications first, you know, let's look at the model, the unified model, and build on those open APIs, and then start to you know, allow people to come in and create an ecosystem of applications all using that same model. If you don't mind me asking you, um, if you can explain, because we talked before, uh, we weren't on camera, but we talked about the cloud, and you were explaining to me how this is perfect for the challenges that you guys are trying to solve. What is about the public cloud dynamic or innovation component that you guys are leveraging. Take us through a little bit on that because I think that's a big story here that's under the covers is yeah. what you're capable of doing here. Can you yeah. mind explaining? Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and so the cloud gives us this true scalability across everything. We can create, you know, we can scale to billions of records. So we can hook in, you know, to, you know, to suck in um, data from, you know, our on-premise systems you know, where we have, you know, our, our product called DevFlows that we use to do that. Um, and it can really allow us to bring that, that data in, scale out, use standard cl um, cloud innovations like Lambda functions in AWS, you know, DynamoDB, um, and present that you know, through that open API. So we, use, we can use you know, GraphQL, you know, present that with REST on top. Um, and so you can then build on top of that. You can take any low code, no code application building tool you like, put that on top, and then start building your own ecosystem. You can build inventory systems, CRM, anything you like. How do you, well, okay, one please. thing, one thing that's really interesting about these projects is they usually take months, years mm. to deploy, right? And what we're doing is we're providing almost BSS as a service, right? It's an API layer that anyone can code to. Maybe you need to use it for five minutes, 
five months, five years, right? With the open standard and your other, your own developers can learn how to use this text um, stack and code to it, doesn't require us. And so we're really trying to get away from being an SI, you know, systems integrator right. or heavy services revenue and instead build the product that enables the telcos to use their own people to build the build the applications that they they know what they want and so here it's you go. It's a platform. Yeah. It's so, a platform. So how do you connect to systems on the ground? Like what, what what's the approach the modern approach to doing that? Yeah. Yeah, so telcos have you know huge amount of data on premise. Um, they they have difficulties and get to it. So as I mentioned before, we have this DevFlows product and it has connectors. We have like 30 plus connectors to all the standard sort of billing systems, CRM systems. You know, we can hook into things like Salesforce um, and we can create either, you know, kind of a real time interface in there or we can start to suck data out into the cloud and then make it available. So if they want to start with a nice easy step and just build slowly, we can just hook in and pull that information out. If there may be a, you know, an attribute that you want to, you know, to you know, use in some of the application, you can easily get to it. Um, and then you know, over time, you start to build your data into the cloud. Um, and then you've, you've got the scale, you know, the, yeah. and, and all the innovations that that brings with it. So is, De is, so is DevFlow an on-ramp, if you will, for the public cloud? Is that what, the way you're thinking about it? Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah, I mean, I call it the slurper, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and so, I mean, these telcos have, like Robin was saying, spaghetti systems that have been, you know, customized and connected and integrated. I mean, it is a jungle out there of, of data. They're not going to be able to move this in one step. It's just too many. I mean, just think of like a, a pile of spaghetti, like the whole bowl. Overcooked spaghetti. Right, overcooked. <laughs> right, the whole bowl comes out and it's really hard to just pull out one noodle and yeah. the rest is there and what are you going to do? And so the slurper, right, DevFlows, allows you to select which data you want to pull out. It could be one time. You could have it sync. You don't have to do the whole thing and it doesn't disrupt the production environment that's on premise. But now you're starting to move your data into the public cloud. And then like uh, Robin was saying, you can throw it up against uh, quick sites. You can throw it up against different Amazon yeah. services. You can create new applications. And so it's not this like, you know, big bang kind of approach. You can start to do it in pieces. And I think that's what, that's what the industry needs. We talked about this the other day where uh, when we talk about charging, what a lot of vendors will do is they'll, they'll put a wrapper around it, containerize it, and then shove it into the public cloud and say, okay, and check that, mark. yeah, checkbox, <laughs> and it affects how they price, because they price the same way. Right? We talked a lot about pricing the other day, really pricing like cloud, consumption pricing. How, how yeah. are you pricing in this same case? With the, same with the charging system. The BSS system is pay by the use, pay by the API call. So uh, really excited to introduce yet again a free tier. Um, we think we're doing 500 million API calls per month for free. I think this is great for a smaller telco or like you're experimenting and just getting to know the, the system and before, before you like go all in and, and buy. And um, I think that API pricing is gonna go right at the heart of some of these vendors that love to charge by the subscriber or a perpetual license agreement, right? They're not quite moving into as a service. And so, yeah. Are you saying they're gonna be disruptive in the pricing in terms of lower cost or more uh, it's consumable. both lower cost, and I think it's also an easier on-ramp, right? It's easy to start paying by the use and experimenting. And it's really easy, just like I was talking about with, with charging, where you're going to get the same great product that you would sell to a tier one at a price that you can afford. And now those, those smaller tier three guys aren't having to make a trade-off between great technology, but I'm paying for the nose, or sacrifice on the tech, but I can afford it. And so I think, I think you're going to see this ecosystem of people starting to learn how to code and think in this way. Telcos have already decided that they want to adopt the TM form open APIs. They're on all the RFPs. Do you support it? Everyone says they support it, but we don't see anyone really doing it. They're not on the leaderboard. Yeah. And there's transparency because you're pricing by API call, yeah. right? Versus the spaghetti, you guys call it, yeah. the hairball of, yeah. well, what am I paying for? That's right. You're getting all of this, it's by the subscriber, it's millions and millions of dollars. Oh, and you know, you're gonna need to buy a bunch of consulting revenue to make it all work and talk to each other. Pay up, right? And that's what we're living in today. And I'm taking us to the, you know, public cloud future of by the API. I mean, this is, this is yeah. the big cloud revolution. It's unbundling has been a really big part of the consumption of technology pay by the usage, get in, get some value, get some data, understand what it is, double down on it. 
iterate. Put it up with different services that are available uh, that we don't have, but yeah. Amazon uses, right? They have call centers up there. Yeah. They have ML that you may want to use. Like start using it, start coding, start learning about the AWS tech stack. So is it available um, now? Yeah. Yeah, it's, actually, no, it's available now. We've already published um, the, the, the Swagger um, for, for the BSS APIs. So you know, people can come, they can come on board, they can get access to all the APIs straight away and start using it. They can load up their favorite REST clients um, and then start developing. So you got a dozen APIs today. Where, where are we headed? What can we expect? All by the end of the year. There's a, over 50 APIs. Um, you know, the number one guy on the board is at like 22, 21, 22 APIs covered. Yeah. We'll be 50 plus by the end of the year. And we're just going to blow doors. The API yeah. economy has come to telco. Yeah, I mean, it's really BSS's Lego pieces, right? Assembling these different components and really opening it up. And I think there's been a lot of power by the vendors to keep it locked down, keep it close. Yes, we have an API, but you got to use our people to do it. Here's the hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars that you're going to pay us and keep us in business and fat and happy. And I'm coming right in on the low end, right? Dropping that price, opening it up. I think telcos are going to love it. Well, like you said too, you, you, you'll allow the smaller telcos to have the, the, the same, actually better capabilities than the larger telcos, right? Maybe the stack's not as mature or whatever, but they'll get there and they'll get there with a simpler, easier to understand pricing model and way, way faster. Yeah. Right? And that's where the disruption comes in. And I think yeah. this is where AWS has really done well as a hyperscaler yeah. against their competition, is that they've really gotten to market very quickly with their services. Maybe they're not perfect, but they ship them. And they get them out there and they get people using them. They use them internally and they get them out. And I think this yeah. is where maybe some of the other hyperscalers, they hold them back and they wait until they're a little bit more mature. Yeah. And AWS is one because they've been fast and I want to I want to sort of copy well, that I think, lead. I think your idea of subscriber love in your keynote and I think applies here because Amazon Web Services has done such a great job of working backwards from the customer. So they ship it fast on use cases that they know have been proven through customer interactions. Yep. They don't just make up new features, they, and then they iterate. They yep. go, okay. Start simple, grow yeah. on that, learn from the market. What are people using? What are they not using? Iterate, iterate, iterate. Okay, so it's with great. that in mind, working backwards from your customer, how do you see the feature set evolving for this functionality? How do you see it evolving as a product? Yeah, I mean, I think all of the BSS systems today have been designed with manual people on the other side of the screen. Right, and we've seen chatbots take off. We've seen, you know, using chat as support. Um, I think we need to start getting into more automation, right? Which is really going to change up telco, right? Yeah, they have yeah. thousands of customer support agents, and you're like, dude, I just want a sim. That's yeah. all I need. Yeah. Just like where do I push a button and send an Uber to my house and drop it off, yeah. or eSIM. And so the speed, speeding up business, empowering the subscriber. Yeah. We know how to interact. We just went through COVID where we learned about different apps that overnight you could like order all of your groceries and order all of your food and there it is and it was yeah. contactless. And it's, fu it's funny, you said future of work, which we love that term work, workloads, workforce. Um, you have all these kind of new dynamics going on in with cloud enablement and the change is, is radical. I mean, and the value is there. There's value yeah. opportunities. I mean, like, you know, where are the AR, VR applications? Right, where like, your agent pops, I saw the demo, a, there's a startup in Austin and they're going to kill me because I can't remember their name, but they had a little, on your mobile phone, a little holographic customer support, yeah. like how can I help you, right? And I'm like, where's that? Like imagine you're like at t you're not like on the phone for like an hour and a half trying to like figure out yeah. what's wrong and it's like, you know, it knows what's wrong, it understands my needs. And so no one's working on that, we're still working on Keyboards and, and that and right that and chatbots a great example because it's all AI and where's the best AI? It's in the cloud, because that's where the data is. That's where the best modeling has been. Well, and well, so. yeah, I think I think your point. Not only it's the scale of data. Yeah, absolutely. And yes. machine learning and AI needs a lot of data points to get really good. And so I mean, I, I'm old. I'm 50. I graduated in in 1993. Um, I took an AI class from Niels Nielsen, like the godfather of AI, right? Okay, like that AI, even 10 years ago AI, it's just moving so quickly and it's now super affordable. So it's all Well, awesome. I really want to thank you guys for coming up and sharing that knowledge and insight. Congratulations on the product and the open APIs. Love open APIs, open source. This is a new revolution. Danielle awesome. Robin, thank you yeah. so much. Thanks Congratulations. So much. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. you. Thank you everyone for coming.
Okay, back to you in, in the studio. Cloud City.